you know, we, as a state entity, we have certain flexibility, but we don't even have any design. Okay. Do you know approximately how many, um, how many classrooms? Where we you? Uh, well, we have to replace all the teaching functionality that's in this building. Uh, we have decreased our enrollment over time. We're like a thousand students now, so we have to figure out the right mix of classrooms. I mean, how many classrooms do we need for, for the modern teaching style? Right now, the classrooms in one, uh, 198 McAllister really reflect the 1950s, where you had that sort of uh, the paper chase. So you have to update the, 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 the new environment for the yeah. thing on microgrid. Which is much other, more other, other, other for university. Many more rooms for like this configuration, flexible seating. You know, the fixed seating, um, lecture hall sort of thing will pass. Well, okay, why should the thing phase three go away then when you, uh, would you be, since you're saying uh, 198 is you're replacing the, uh, what's there in the way thing, what would you do with the building at 198? Uh, I mean, because if you're moving the, the teachers, the, the classrooms over to this new site, what, what happens to 198 when you're done? Uh, that becomes a site where you would look at developing additional student housing. So, so, so basically that would be the, the dishes would be, so you would, you would be replacing uh, teaching space, teaching space to house space. Yeah. How, many, how many units would you, would you try to match what you have well, in uh, McAllister? Or, we, or right or now, student, student housing is, is really problematic. Uh, we have a 100 person waiting list. Uh, so we house 280 students now. If we had another 100 units, we could fill that up pretty much in a heartbeat. Uh, students, are the same challenges that the people in the neighborhood are. Uh, our students compete against the Twitter kids. They they go to Craigslist. They basically. But, but, but what's your but what what but is the current price of your current housing at uh, that you have at one hundred pounds here? What is that? Is that market rate or or is it low market? No, if we try to we try to provide some of the low market stuff today. So right now, our average rent of under McAllister with utilities is about fourteen hundred bucks a month. Now that was that's an old building, nothing fancy. It's an old hotel. The kitchen units go back to nineteen seventy eight. So we would try to continue to provide, uh, you know, affordable housing. And, and also, with, with this uh, for the city, this would also be indirectly the, the new um, housing would be the group housing. Uh, I don't know. It's basically structured as uh, apartments. So it would be, it would, it would have the kitchen and everything. Everything, oh, yeah. be, uh, everything I get uh, 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 kitchen. Well, typically our students are the uh, grad student population. They don't really like to share. They don't, they tend to uh, prefer the single occupant. You know, their own bathroom, their own kitchen. But there's a trade-off, so it's a question of what the students are willing to pay. If we do, we're going to survey the students, and if they uh, are willing to do a trade-off, we may have shared kitchens for some units to uh, increase the affordability. Uh, Betty? Well, I'm just going to say, you probably know this already, but at Ninth and Mission, they're building the kind of first example for tiny place yeah. units. I think it's less than 200 square feet and all that. But a lot of, like the Conservatory of Music has already leased several floors, because it is ideal student space it for is. just what you're saying. You'd have your own unit, very tiny, but you're just there to study anyway, supposedly. So, uh, I mean, it's students well can live in little uh, units, uh, that, you know, just because, uh, you know, they're out and about a lot and whatever, so. It really makes sense to students. I mean, I think some of the concerns about the micro units that, you know, a lot of people have is, you know, is 200 square feet livable for no. a, 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 a no. someone who are just pushing stuff out of the streets. So I think for students it makes sense. I, I, yeah. I can okay. see the argument against those little micro units in terms of the, you know, the city. Yeah. I mean, I don't know if being, I couldn't live in a 200 square foot place. My, I would, I would break my neck going to the bathroom. You know, it would be, it would be absolutely. But I think for a student who's looking at basically the trade-off between debt, because most yeah. of our students finance their education for debt, and in minimizing debt and living space, I think a lot of our students would prefer to minimize their debt, mm -hmm. and, and accept for a two or three year period 
smaller unit than, uh, than a, a, a working person would. So. Yeah. Um, um, how many units? Uh, well, it's 252 yeah. units. And in those, between those 252 units, about 280 students. And they're all single. They all live. You know, there's, there's a few two bedrooms. And so what is the plan? What, what is sort of the very general plan for a new building would have how many units? I'd like to get 400. 400. So that would get, that's half your student population. Yeah. And you we would look to partner with other educational institutions. We're talking to UCSF because they have a thousand person waiting. You have a thousand person waiting? And waiting. you have a hundred person waiting. Is it always, is it stayed about that? Uh, typically, it's about, well, let me be, be precise. We have a 50 person waiting list. Mm -hmm. But a lot of the students, when they see a 50 person waiting list, say, you know, I'm not going to bother. So our housing people think that if we had an additional 100 units, we could fill up okay, an additional. Okay, so that's now, you know, this, this is, student housing is kind of, students are destabilizing to the rental market. market. Because let's just forget student housing, and I'm a student of Gordon Hastings. Um, I, I, I get lucky I land into a rent control department. Great. I've got a rent control department. My rent increases are pretty stipulated to a percent and a half, two percent. Great. If I'm the landlord, I'm really, really happy because that student's going to be out of here in three years, and I can reset the rent to market. So, in a sense, uh, the existence of a large population of students who are competing with the Twitter people, residents, folks on Craigslist is really destabilizing because it allows for a much more rapid escalation in uh, average rents because of that ability to reset the rent every time the tenant leaves. So there's a real social uh, benefit to uh, institutions having additional student housing. But also, uh, yeah, I was going to say, you know, w we might be looking at the beginning of retrenchment because, the, first of all, the venture capitalists are going to, I mean, the, the, a lot of these startups are going to run out of venture capital money and they have yet to show they can make, make money on their own. And the other thing is, uh, oh gosh, uh, gap. You know, all of a sudden there's, there's, there's probably going to be like three or four hundred families having to leave San Francisco. Maybe more. So yes, there's, yeah. this is this is kind of a cyclical thing. Well, right now the, the housing market is hurting Hastings considerably because we have our tuition is 44 grand a year. Students delay their choices about where to go to school until they figure out that Harvard's not a possibility. Then they say, oh, I got to move fast. I got to land in the San Francisco market, and then like, oh my God, a, a the median price of a one bedroom and, and the tender line is what? 2,600 items? It's a crazy number. And students look at that to a 12 times 2,600 plus books, plus living, uh, plus uh, tuition. That's a big number. I might just, we might as well go to Santa Clara or someplace uh, where the cost of living is a little bit lower. So for Hastings, not having housing is becoming a competitive disadvantage. Mm -hmm. Now, to your point, yeah, the, this cannot sustain itself. There's no way that the economy is going to be able to support, or the community for that matter, with ever escalating housing prices that are just pushing people out. Because that the business cycle will ultimately turn. But after 2008, the rents really didn't drop that much. And the rents dropped maybe 10, 20% of that. So I, you know, I'm not well, sure I'm thinking of the dot com, dot bomb that happened in the year 2000. Yeah. 17,000 people left San Francisco because, like I say, that it, it was like the IPO disaster and all the other things that happened. You know, it was sort of like chickens coming home to roost because, like I say, they ran out of venture capital money. They, you know, they had to go home. Well, interest rates go up, you know, anything can happen. But I do agree that the business cycle will turn. But I, I think the, the development is different now because there are actually jobs companies actually make money. If Twitter's not making money, but Square's making money, Zendesk makes money. So I think the mm -hmm. fundamentals are such that you're not going to see a huge collapse like it was in the past well, Those companies had nothing. They just, just vapor there. We went, they had some great parties. 
That's the creepy part. <laughs> I don't remember that part. Anything else? Uh, yes, because um, we were there in the process uh, a block away at the, the old, the two lots at, at, at Hayes at, uh, at the, the YMCA. Uh, those are going to be group housing without also being a mix uh, because uh, in, in the month they may probably be approved and that's group housing and, and, and which your, your, your uh, you know, price is lower than like you were referring to for you know, one bedroom. Your students might buy into that, I mean, because I don't know who's, who's the best or the people there. But I mean, would, uh, we were told the um, the uh, proposed rent was uh, 1,500, 1,700 uh, for, 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 for those units. Probably square feet. 200 square feet. Because uh, you, 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 you got the unit of team, but then you, 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 you share, share the kitchen? You, yeah, share kitchen, which I think you have a, a microwave or something. You don't have that. So, uh, but I, I, it is, I didn't. But again, but that's yeah. Yeah, and it's, but you have common spaces to to to, to yeah. run, study and so forth. And so it's only well, I'm not all that familiar with that designation. Group I mean, we, we well, that's a new category, and also we, we're trying to uh, do with those things that are local. Because another thing that I'm trying to is there's some 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 planning issues already been discussed in the South Market. Nothing in the Caroline has been uh, more hashed out. Channeling Reverend Linda, she would say to me, Do you have anything else to say, Stuart? So, uh, any other questions before I hand it off? I have one more question. Last time we talked about this, um, about the, the uh, enrollment at Hastings, it was not great. It was going down, as you had told me. It was at all law, many law schools. But has that changed? And does that affect your plans for this at all? Or you just sort of Powering forward and deciding it's going to turn well, around or the square, stabilized. Well, the, the square footage of the old academic building to the new academic building is like a 25% reduction. So the actual teaching space mm -hmm. is going to shrink. And I'm hoping to, by you know, greater efficiency, you know, make that pretty manageable. Mm -hmm. um, but we're also, we you know, the JD population is declining. We're hoping to increase our international students. We have an LLM program, which is a one-year uh, legal degree, and our MSLs. Now, those programs take time to grow, and you know, there are challenges, and you know, part of the challenge is the housing market. But we are looking to increase enrollment in those programs, at the same time decreasing enrollment in our JD program. So it is still decreasing? Uh, well, we planned it that way. So we plan to achieve over a three-year period this reduced enrollment in light of the marketplace. Applications are still decreasing. That's what I mean. Yeah. Our enrollment, we were pretty much on target with our plan, uh -huh. but the, on a national basis, the application mm -hmm. pool uh, continues to shrink, and we're hoping it's bottom line, bottom line. But that's, that's sort of the fundamental market drivers of what Because that's been going on for a good five, six, seven years now. Yeah, yeah well, over five years, about a 40, 50 percent drop. So this for what percent? 40 to 50 percent in applications. Wow, over five years. Over five years, so very, very significant. Wow. So if you only want to go to law school, now's a great time to apply. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, first of all, I want you to know that I lived in a 200 square foot shipping container for two years in Afghanistan, and it is beautiful. So, okay. you know. um, well, in Afghanistan, you have other things to worry about. <laughs> <laughs> right. uh, but uh, first, I do want to say that I'm very, uh, on behalf of the Board of Directors, I'm thrilled that this is the first meeting that uh, we're having to um, describe our development plans because we on the board deeply believe that Hastings is a neighbor of the Tenderloin. So um, I'm thrilled that this is the first and we hope to have many. Now I have a question with regards to that. Being a good neighbor, Tenderloin, do you envi what in issues do you envision we may uh, have to deal with with this development in this area? Well, that's a great question. I think the most significant, and it won't really be an issue as we think we go to the because we get the height limits aren't going to be you know, it's really, I think, shade on public parks. I mean, that's just, to me, that's a, a, something you have to be really mindful of. And I think, again, for 333, it should not be an issue because we're sort of going to be tucked in and say, give me an infill project. So, you know, the nearest public park 
is uh, Silver Center Plaza, which you'll get a lot of real estate. But I think that's that's a, that's an issue. I think it's really you know in an urban setting, you've got to be really sensitive to the impact you have on public spaces. I'm not expecting anything on traffic. Uh, we have to do traffic, noise, uh, you know, cultural resources. Um, but housing, and again, this is four or five years down the road. I think we have to be mindful of, again, height being the primary constraint. And also on Golden Gate Avenue, the desirability of having something that's kind of terraced, so it's not just a monolithic uh, cube. Yeah. But you've seen some, I've seen some very nice uh, architecture where they do setbacks off of the, uh, the property and the street line. I really like to look at that. Uh, we really want to encourage and incorporate into our planning process of greening and sustainability principles. I would, well actually, I'm working with Casey, Casey Asbury, to talk about how we uh, maximize the roof opportunities, you know, roof uh, functions, roof gardens. Uh, I would love to do some vertical uh, green walls and uh, perhaps solar panels on 200 accounts that and the adjoining property. So, again, the CEQA process is very, very exhaustive. Again, there's a whole range of um, subject matters that you look at, and if you do identify a potential impact, you develop mitigations. So I think that's gonna be the, uh, where that really gets fleshed out as to the substance. But again, I'm not really expecting much on Golden Gate Avenue because it's, it's, it's pretty, uh, from a construction standpoint, vanilla. vanilla. Um, but I really would like a little bit to have some parenting opportunities to minimize the um, shade of things. So, because this should be part of your plan too, what, what is your current uh, 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 capacity or, 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 or reducing it? Uh, what is your current um, fulfillment of your parking garage? Um, what, 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 Average month, month or weekly, but whatever basis, how much time take you? Monday through Friday, we're probably running at about 90% occupancy, 95% occupancy. So, so is, that, is that, that what you plan on? Or, or yeah. Not? Okay. Yeah. I mean, I'd like to get more evening activity, but frankly. One of the whole goals of the garage is to help activate Golden Gate Avenue night. And I think Phil's has been a great success. Uh, the Golden Era, even restaurants are open from 9. Uh, we do have some vacancy now in that storefront. And one of the Ideal. One of the criteria looking at possible tenants is how late they are. I think we all understand the negative aspects of dead garbage. But also, you, your garage is not open to my garage. No, it's not open. Okay. So, what, what, how late is it? So, uh, he left. He left. Okay. But somebody could park there overnight. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. If they can't get their car between 11 and 7. So, there's uh, just uh, anything else, folks? Well, Okay, we're going back to my meeting moderator role. And now we have community updates and announcements. Uh, we have a historic preservation commission hearing, uh, playground renovations. If you folks are in the uh, area, it's Friday night, you're going to uh, light up City Hall to celebrate the uh, 100th anniversary of the building. It's going to be quite a show. I've gotten some great reports from students that are living in the tower that have been watching the previews. So it's going to be pretty uh, spectacular. Mm -hmm. Word is that the president will be in town, so that could be <laughs> challenging. Um, John, do you want to talk about the Tennis Association Coalition? Are you on, are you on that one? Yeah, but we don't. We don't, we don't. Uh, it, it, oh, okay. it, it, so, any questions on these? The, uh, the grand opening of the Tennis Line Museum, July 16th. Um, any public comment before we adjourn? I could just announce that friends at Bodecker. Park. Our usual meeting is tomorrow, the third Thursday at 3.30. One of the things we're going to be discussing is uh, plans for murals that are definitely right at the park. The Windsor Building is going to, they want a, uh, a mural. Uh, they have designs um, to look at. They've had community meetings. And then um, the, the building on um, the Ella Street part, the uh, y, YWAM building, they're looking at having a mural. So there's two major murals going to be built in th that in the Tenderloin, but particularly impacting the park. So uh, we're going to be starting to discuss um, 
at least the YWAM mural tomorrow, and the other mural kind of being an update. They'll be soon 